This is CBN Newswatch. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm George Thomas. Setting fires and looting businesses. Protests over the brutal death of George Floyd at the hands of a police officer turned violent overnight in Minneapolis. In L.A., protesters stopped freeway traffic as demonstrations erupted across the country. What action is the president now taking to see that justice is done? Jenna Brada has the story. Protests turned violent in Minneapolis overnight with one man killed as people across the country continue to demand justice for George Lloyd. It's like they killed that white woman over north. Demonstrators clashing with police, businesses looted, and this auto zone set on fire. But many demonstrators marching peacefully. And are literally marching through traffic. And in LA, protesters stopped freeway traffic. They also gathered in Houston, where Floyd grew up. Cameras captured the final moments of Floyd's life. Floyd unarmed and handcuffed with a white police officer kneeling on his neck. As he says, I can't breathe. After about five minutes, he stops breathing and appears unconscious. The officer's knee is still on his neck. Police were on the scene responding to a call about a forged check used at a store. All four officers have been fired, and now the mayor of Minneapolis is calling for that one officer to be arrested and charged. What we witnessed on that video was hard. The notion that you or I would have been put in jail upon doing something like that, and he was not, it's just wrong. Derek Chauvin, the officer who was kneeling on Floyd's neck, had reportedly received multiple complaints about police conduct during his 19-year career, but no disciplinary action was taken against him. President Trump was asked about Floyd's death yesterday in Florida. Well, we're going to look at it and we're going to get a report tomorrow when we get back. And we're going to get a very full report, but a very sad day. The president later tweeting he had ordered investigations into Floyd's death by the FBI and Justice Department. And faith leaders are speaking out too. On Twitter, Franklin Graham, this makes me sick to my stomach. What took place yesterday on a Minneapolis street by the Minneapolis PD should deeply concern each and every American. And award-winning Christian artist Lecrae with this video on Instagram. What we're experiencing out here right now in this world is pure unadulterated evil. And saying people should be angry, but adding. Use that anger to be constructive. Use it for prayer, for policy changes, for programs that we can get involved in to change the way that things are right now. Be characterized by your love and productivity. And don't let hatred and bitterness where you are, because then evil wins. Jenna Browder, CBN News. Those are very strong words, and we want to continue to pray for Mr. Floyd's family at this time. Joining me now for insight is the Director of Criminal Justice at Cedarville University, Dr. Patrick Oliver. Dr. Patrick, thank, uh, Dr. Oliver, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, by the way, you also served for 20 plus years in law enforcement. Uh, what are general police policy guidelines uh, regarding use of force? Any use of force policy should indicate that a police officer or officers should use no more force than needed to effect the arrest. So not any more than is required to effect an arrest. Uh, what does the case law say about the use of force? There are two key cases that uh, address the use of force in the United States. The first one is Tennessee versus Garner from 1985. And the second one is Graham versus Connor from 1989. And Tennessee versus uh, Garner talks about guidelines for shooting a fleeing felon that you can't shoot a fleeing felon unless that person presents a high degree of risk to the individual or someone else. And Graham versus Connor basically gives some guidelines for using force. It really comes down to three key questions. What is the seriousness of the crime? What kind of risk does that person present to the officer or others? Or is that person attempting to flee? So those are the two key seminal cases that guide use of force for all law enforcement across the United States. Hmm. Uh, should the four officers who have already been arrested uh, been formally charged? Should they have been fired, perhaps? I think the termination is probably too soon. That may shock a lot of people by saying that. But police officers have due process, mm -hmm. and they need to go through the due process process before they make a termination decision. Uh, it seems like it was so fast. I wonder if the Minneapolis city had the opportunity to do that. Mm. Uh, 
And second, it's up to the prosecutor when charges are filed and what charges are filed. So if you just look at the video clip, it certainly seems that these officers should have some disciplinary action, probably termination. And it does appear that uh, these officers should be charged in criminal court. Mm. Uh, what can we, uh, so as a society and uh, police officers across the country, learn uh, from this incident? Well, one of the big things that's talked about right now is de-escalation. You know, de-escalate de a situation and not to use force in the first place instead of heightening the situation. So uh, making sure officers understand use of force policies, they get training on that policy and their supervision and guidelines of that policy. Use of force is something that every law enforcement agency should train on every single year. Uh, and how can things like this uh, be prevented uh, moving forward? It really comes down to who you hire. It comes down to policy guidelines. It comes down to training on those policy guidelines, supervision, and then holding people accountable when violations occur. Okay, terrific. Uh, Dr. Oliver, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Uh, more than 100,000 American lives have now been lost due to COVID-19. As we continue to try to reopen, more than a dozen states are seeing growing numbers of cases. Health officials say the virus's spread has significantly slowed, but new cases are still rising in at least 14 states. California today joining three other states with at least 100,000 known infections. We are moving forward. Let us not forget the most vulnerable amongst us. This as uh, new unemployment filings show more than 2 million additional Americans have lost their jobs. That's more than 40 million people out of work in the last 10 weeks. Turning overseas from India and Pakistan to Africa and the Middle East, farmers are facing a perfect storm. Already struggling with crippling coronavirus lockdowns, they now face billions of locusts devouring crops and putting millions at risk. Here's a look at the havoc they're causing. This was the scene in parts of northern and central India this week as billions of desert locusts descended. It's India's worst infestation in a quarter century, causing unprecedented devastation as the migratory pests devoured hundreds of thousands of acres of farmland. The problem with the locust group is that they eat up the leaves of crops standing in the agriculture fields. It also hurts animals subsequently. Indian farmers banged pots and pans to ward off the dangerous insects to no avail. The government in New Delhi dispatched teams to spray insecticide, but the damage was already done. The insects swamped Pakistan earlier in the week before heading east. The Food and Agriculture Organization says a relatively small swarm covering close to half a square mile can include up to 80 million locusts and travel 150 miles in a single day. A group monitoring the insects in India reported at least 10 such swarms chewing through crops as of Wednesday. And it's only going to get worse. Heavy rains and the cyclone season in June are expected to see the swarms multiply. As we have reported, the food supplies and livelihoods of millions across Africa and Middle East also remain under threat. This UN map shows the locust infestation spreading from the Horn of Africa across the Arabian Gulf to Yemen, Saudi Arabia and to parts of Iran and Afghanistan. Somalia among the hardest hit countries. Recent flooding, locusts and the pandemic posing a triple threat there. The government in Mogadishu declaring a national emergency. The consequences for Somalia are acute. Even before COVID, more than 5 million Somalis required humanitarian assistance. The desert locust forecast between now and late July shows the infestation continuing to pose a serious threat to large areas of Africa, Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. Still ahead, we break down new developments surrounding former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and why his case has not been dis dismissed. But before we go to the break, here's a look at what's trending on CBNNews.com.
Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I like your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. This is CBN Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Watch breaking news, exclusive stories and programs, credible news reporting. We show you what's happening in the world and how you can pray about it. This is CBN News Watch because truth matters. Weekdays at 5 on the CBN News Channel. Joy! Yes! Right on time! From Superbook. Pepper's Pizza Palace is donating pizza for everyone today. Wait, 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 wait. I have big plans today. Trust in God even when times are tough. He has a plan for your life. Hey, we're going to be late for the grand opening. My parents want me to help with this outreach thing, feeding the community. What am I supposed to do here? Superbook! Join the Superbook Club and get Superbook The Birth of Moses, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. Pharaoh ordered all newborn Hebrew boys thrown into the Nile River, and I have a three-month-old brother. <gasps> the Birth of Moses. Yours for a gift of only $25. What will you do the next time the soldiers come? I do not know, but I trust God has a plan for all of us. Superbook Club members free streaming for seasons one, two, and three is now available. Welcome back, folks. You're watching the CBN News Channel. A federal judge has until May 31st to explain why he has not dismissed the case against former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. District asked Judge Emmett Sullivan to explain why he appointed a retired federal judge to challenge the Department of Justice's decision to drop the case. President Trump and others believe Lieutenant General Flynn's case is at the very heart of FBI and deep state efforts to take down the Trump administration. On this week's episode of The Global Lane, American Center for Law and Justice attorney Jordan Sekulow predicts what may happen next to Flynn and Judge Sullivan. Gary, I will tell you, I've talked to attorneys that work with us that were former U.S. attorneys asking just as, have they ever seen anything like this before? And throughout these last few weeks with General Flynn's case, and when you had the Department of Justice come in, the prosecutors come in, the judge is not a party in the case, he, uh, now he's, he's really behaving as one, and come in and say, we were wrong, we went back, even if there was something with the testimony, it wasn't when he was presenting information to the FBI. It wasn't anything relevant to an actual legitimate investigation. And so we're going to drop this and uh, put out all the information why, put out the decision why. The judge still has to make a decision on that. No one was taking that away from Judge Sullivan. The judge doesn't have to accept that. But to take this action, he started, I knew he was, a, there were issues when, one, he started claiming inherent authority. Right there, that day, when he came out and said inherent authority, not actual, not written, not, not actually delegated, nowhere to be found, and he took it from the civil uh, procedure, not the criminal procedure, that there were issues. But now that he's lawyered up, I think that there's probably something else going on here, more than just the writ of mandamus, which was, it's an unusual action to be successful on. Well, it's very strange, isn't it, the whole, the whole thing, because now he's acting like a prosecutor, and here the prosecutor, the DOJ, says, no, we're going to, we are not going to prosecute this case. And the judge says, oh, well, okay, you won't prosecute it, I will. Uh, so what is your prediction on how the federal appeals court is likely to rule, Jordan, for or against Flynn and why? I do believe that General Flynn will ultimately be vindicated. Uh, the Department of Justice has been clear about that, and Attorney General Barr, the, the prosecutors, people have spent time on it. They've said, they, this, is, this was not right, what happened here, from the very beginning. And the information that we've learned about the setup uh, to Mike Flynn, are we trying to get him to lie? All that information and from the FBI, going back to Jim Comey's days and Andrew McCabe's days at the FBI. So I, I do believe he ultimately gets vindicated. Judge Sullivan has taken some unprecedented action. I wonder 
Gary, if by the ne in the next four or five days, whether Judge Sullivan is even the judge in this case, I think that's what to look for is, is there, because he could have done, answered the writ of mandamus about why he took the action he did without lawyering up. When you lawyer up, there, you are indicating that there's something else going on that we may not know yet. And, you know, people are speculating because it is such bizarre action. You just don't usually see a judge that becomes party to a case. And that's not what the writ of mandamus action was about. It was a, that's a civil action. And those kind of issues arise in criminal cases, though this is the first time anybody I've talked to from the legal world who's, who has been on both sides, prosecutors and defense attorneys, uh, they've never seen this before. And if the case against Flynn is dismissed, what will that mean, Jordan, for Donald Trump and the folks at the FBI and the DOJ? I do believe that if you were someone like, like President Trump, so you were not coming from the Washington establishment world, you got into uh, D.C. and suddenly all of your top folks, top advisors come under attack. And uh, some still are. Others have been vindicated. Uh, he's been vindicated uh, by both the Mueller uh, report, which found no legal issues, no wrongdoing, no collusion, all of that. And then uh, again, through impeachment when he was acquitted by the Senate there. And so this has been a, a, a time, I think that people were waiting for, would there be vindication for people like this? And, uh, and we knew from the beginning, the, the problem areas in the government were not just intelligence and kind of bizarre areas like that. It, the problem areas also included DOJ attorneys that are not supposed to be partisan, that are you know, part of the bureaucracy, that are supposed to enforce the laws. And, and, uh, and again, this just, we, we, we realized, you know, it took years, but all of us from the legal world know it takes a long time. So I think for President Trump, I mean, listen, this, is a, this has been a tough time for, uh, because of other issues. But, uh, but again, you've got to have your top, top folks. Uh, and I think what people will know who do work for the president is that, you know, he's, he is, has in a sense got their back because he will, you know, take a stand with them and uh, understands when there's been wrongdoing. And I think here, we all knew that there was wrongdoing in this investigation. It stunk from the beginning. And, and now we're starting to see that play out in court proceedings. But realize they ruined people's lives or tried to. Okay, we'll see how all of this transpires. Jordan Seculo of the American Center for Law and Justice. Thank you, Jordan, for keeping us updated. Thanks, Gary. You can watch more of The Global Lane tonight at 9.30 Eastern right here on the CBN News Channel. Up next, how CBN's Operation Blessing is helping families in the Philippines recover from a destructive typhoon. When I came to Regent University, it's like the world opened up. I felt like I needed to advance my career and go back to school. Regent was a perfect fit for me. The Regent professors are world class. You are equipped. The focus of the faculty is on each individual student, whether it's online or in person. You become a part of Regent's family. You carry with you not just the content and the knowledge, but the confidence to understand that we can be significant in the world. Regent University, follow your path. Nigerian Christians are Christians being slaughtered in Iran are routinely every day. arrested. Catholic Christians of continue to suffer. In times of trial and affliction, you need to know the truth. One of the fastest growing Christian populations in the world. Join Wendy Griffith and George Thomas for Christian World News. Young people are the ones who are open to the gospel. Powerful stories of suffering and hope that affect all Christians. Watch Christian World News, Saturday at 5 p.m. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. 
Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. Folks, you are watching the CBN News Channel. Welcome. Thousands are now homeless after, after a strong typhoon ravaged remote towns in the eastern Philippines. Despite the threat of COVID-19, Operation Blessings Disaster Response Team, well, they have been reaching out to Filipinos bearing the brunt of the typhoon. Lucille Talusan brings us the story. Mary Bell Varis was overwhelmed as her husband died tragically, trying to save the family as the typhoon hit. My husband was afraid the roof of the shelter where we evacuated would collapse on us because of the very strong winds. He broke the window so we could jump out, but broken glass cut an artery in his arm. That's why he lost a lot of blood and died. Mary Bell said people tried to help, but it was too late. Now she worries about their future. I lost my husband, our house, and now I don't know how I could work to support our five children. I need to take care of them, especially my two-month-old baby. Nine-year-old Angel Gaza says she was afraid of the powerful winds, but remained strong for her younger sisters. Charlotte was crying because she was scared, and so I put the blanket over her. Their father left them at the temporary shelter while he tried to save their house during the storm. Taking care of her younger siblings is a familiar experience for nine-year-old Angel. Abandoned by their mother, she's to fill that role while their father worked in another town. I take care of my siblings. I bathe them. I cook for them so we will not go hungry. I don't have a choice because I have to find work to earn money to buy food. Now we have more problems because our house was destroyed by the typhoon. The Operation Blessing Disaster Response Team had to observe strict quarantine protocols to be able to pass through the various checkpoints as they traveled to the areas that were hardest hit by Typhoon Vong Fong. Not even the threat of contracting COVID-19 can stop this team from giving the much-needed assistance to the typhoon victims who are now suffering. The team distributed food packs containing rice, canned goods, coffee and other supplies to more than 1,200 families affected by the typhoon. Maribel Varus was among them. Her face brightened after she received her food pack and prayer. Thank you very much. Your help means a lot to us. I hope you can continue to reach more people in need. Aside from the chocolates that Angel enjoyed, they also received a food pack from Operation Blessing. The team's pastor counseled her father and prayed for him. Operation Blessing Philippines says it will rebuild homes for both Maribel and Angel. The OB staff was touched when Angel expressed her gratitude with a heartfelt prayer. Papa Jesus, I will take care of my siblings. I will feed them. I will study well. Help us. Thank you so much, Papa Jesus. Lucille Talusan, CBN News, Eastern Summer, Philippines. Terrific. Operation Blessing doing great work around the world. After the break, folks, what one organization is doing to make sure graduating high school seniors, well, they get the celebrations they deserve. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public school. Watch the prayer link. 
Tuesday nights at 630. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. Regents first ROTC graduate student. <laughs> Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Well, folks, high school seniors across our nation have the chance to virtually come together tonight to celebrate. Dare to Share is teaming up with Faith Christian Academy and Interlink to bring 2020 graduates and their families the National Senior Send-Off live stream. My heart breaks for teenagers, especially high school seniors, during this pandemic. And I thought, what can I do as a dad uh, to do something that can become a marker for these high school seniors. I believe students are going to be inspired and equipped and unleashed, set off for the glory of God to change the world. And this National Senior Send-Off live stream, you can watch it this evening, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the CBN News Channel, YouTube, and all of our streaming apps. Folks, that is it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more of our awesome programs on the CBN News Channel anytime or online at cbnnews.com. Hey, listen, tell us what you think about the stories you've been seeing here by emailing us at newswatch at cbn.com. Maybe you've got a story idea. Please send it. Or you can reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. From all of us here, Megan, my excellent floor director, awesome to have her here from the folks in the control room to here in the studio. Have a great day, guys. Good night.